Thanks. Thank you. Um, for example, problem one, they've given you what's called the velocity potential. Um, so there are basically two ways of representing the data in um, these kind of flows, planar flows. One is what's called, what's called the potential. So you know generally there's a velocity field has an x and y um, vector. You can express all the information in that in what the scalar function phi. Um, part A of this problem is to describe the corresponding stream function. Um, sorry, and I'll explain, I'll explain um, how we derive the stream function and velocity potential. But I just want you to get an idea of what the problem, what a potential problem might look like. Um, if this is called the stream function, which contains identical information in the potential, but there's some, as we'll see, it has physical significance. The stream function tells you what streamlines are. Okay. Um, and B, give Q, oops, Q, unit width, normal to paper. All right, uh, next one is give the flow rate. And because this is planar flow, any flow rates are gonna have the units of, instead of liters, um, um, instead of liters per second, it's gonna be liters per meter per second because they're gonna, it's gonna be per unit depth into the page. Um, Basing between the walls. So the walls in this problem um, is not drawn in the book, but um, they're basically given by, given by this. Uh, you're going to have some uh, flow like this. We will draw the full streamlines in it when we solve this problem in class. Um, but uh, basically, there are lines that basically flow is not going to penetrate. Um, those are lines of constant stream. And we'll, we'll talk about this. So as you can see, the problems in, this, the problems in quiz six are going to be very different from what we had before. I mean, that, for some of you, that's a good thing, I think, because um, <clears throat> Quiz four and five grades, I would say some of them could be better. All right, so to, to figure out the equations of motion for this, we need to take, the other thing you'll notice about these problems is that they're all about um, what's called the differential form of, of the velocity field. So in the past, we've been looking at integrals. But now we're going to change those integrals into basically relationships at a point. So, and that's the rest of the course. The rest of the course is figuring out velocity fields. And um, <clears throat> if you do an integral, it'll be to calculate something later. But you're going to start with um, these differential um, versions of the governing equations. The first one, the one that basically, only one you need for this part of the course, the quiz, is conservation of mass. So, that problem you saw on the left, it's all, you solve for those stream functions and streamlines and potentials using just conservation of mass. You don't need any kind of um, F equals MA. We'll need that for the very last chapter. <clears throat> all right, so what we know from before is the following. This is what we call conservation mass or continuity. Continuity. Continuity meaning that we expect the flow to be continuous. We don't want the flow to be jammed up or disappearing anywhere. And this is the control volume formulation, which I would say this class is kind of like split into two parts now. Um, where basically the bottom one third did not do very well in the last two quizzes. And for those one third of you, um, you will have to take the final. Um, and you really have to get back to this. Like you'd really, like you had two chances on the quizzes to really show your stuff and it still, still needs some work. So 
Near the end of the course, I'm probably gonna shift my focus. I think the people that have A's are probably just gonna peace out. But the people who don't have A's or B's, they're gonna, we're gonna have to do a review session. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the um, control volume formulation. Um, but there's what's called um, the differential form, and I'm gonna write that here. Um, so instead of basically doing an integral, you basically have you're making the following assumptions that rho is a function of x, x and t, and u is a function of x and t, where x is your usual three coordinates that define where you are in this room. For example, if you're a fly in this room, you've got x, y, and z, z being near the ceiling. The fly is also going to be uh, moving around. So what I'm saying, the velocity, so these are, okay, let's just density, velocity field, and a position. When I say the velocity field is a function of uh, x and t, um, so the also the velocity field has three components, u, x. I think for most of you, thinking in Cartesian coordinates is easiest. But basically, you've got a x velocity, a y velocity, and z velocity, and each of those velocities are going to be a function of position. And if stuff changes with time, it'll be a function of time. For the coming quiz, we won't not have functions of time. Um, everything will be steady state. But for a quiz, in fact, even for quiz seven, everything's going to be steady state too. Um, but if you take graduate fluid mechanics, you won't be able to see that. Okay, so this is what's called the differential form. Let's, let's derive this and then we'll talk about the quiz. All right. So how do, how do we go from this integral to this thing? Um, this proof um, basically is going to be how we're also going to do F equals MA later. And it's going to give you, uh, we'll go through it. It's in the book, but it'll give you some idea of how you, how you go, how you basically use these equations. Okay. All right, so consider this cube. Um, for the, our purposes, we'll have x coming out of the page to you. Um, delta x, delta y, delta z. All right. Um, now, so sometimes people will call the the x, y, and z velocity components as u, v, and w, um, just to avoid subscripts, which can lead to errors. Um, so for example, here you got u, here you got v, and here you got w. The velocities in those three directions associated with those, uh, those particular directions. All right, um, first step, and um. First step in this proof All right. C B C S. So um, if we're considering a fixed volume, we can take this time derivative inside. So we'll have D rho DT DX oops, times the volume, which is the volume of a cube is the length of the side, product of the side lengths. We'll call that dv, all right? Now this right-hand side requires us to sort of consider consider basically how u behaves at different edges of the cube. Okay. Um, 
Let's, let's just do this on a new board. All right. All right. So, like we said, every single point in the field you can define a density. Uh, for most of the problems, you can have constant density. For any, if you're going to go aero astro, you have shock waves and stuff like that. Density can change, but um, density can be a function of position, and so can the velocity. And so that little dot there is rho times u at the center of the cube. Um, now the whole. Um, So I'm going to just rotate the cube so that we basically have delta x going this way, just to give you, to make it more clear. But the thing is, if you row you at the center of the cube, at the edge of the cube on the right and the edge of the cube to your left, you're slightly different. Because you've gone to a different point in space, and that gives you a slightly different velocity. Um, in particular, the right-hand side is row u um, plus, uh, and let's actually just consider the x hat component, so no vectors. So we're just going to consider the x-hat component of velocity. On the right-hand side, we have rho u plus how much rho u changes over that distance. And the amount that rho u changes over the distance is derivative of rho u times delta x. And um, we're actually going to multiply by the area, the, cube, the area of the face, and that's delta y delta t. Okay. And similarly for the left-hand side, we have rho u so minus d dx rho u um, delta x times delta y delta z. Okay. And. Uh, you can also just consider this to be saying a row you evaluated at the position x plus delta x over 2. And this is row you evaluated x minus delta x over 2. So, and that's exactly the, um, uh, what the, this row u dot n, that's what we're looking for. So, you can consider row u dot n hat dA the control surfaces to be a sum of basically one plus two plus three components. They're basically control surfaces in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. And I only drew the x ones, but you can imagine the y and z are going to be quite similar. Um, and for particular one is rho u evaluated x plus delta x over two minus rho u x minus delta x over two. See. And uh, those two can be written as the derivative of rho u. These are the derivative of rho u dx uh, times delta x times the area that we had before. Um, in the y direction, you have d rho v dy delta x delta y delta z. Three z direction z all right so all we've done is basically written how much um figure out how this integral is going to change you know if you remember fundamental law calcul calculus the integral is basically uh, this thing evaluate uh, uh, this thing Evaluated those two endpoints, right? So that's all we've done, and so this can now be written as. Uh, let's go to board four. We can write that as what's called the net rate of ma mass outflow. Net rate of mass outflow.
And um, simplifying, so 1 plus 2 plus 3, you can write it like this. And if we divide by delta x, delta y, and delta z, we get what we want. And again, this is called concentration of mass. So you will receive this equation on the um, uh, quiz 7. Uh, we're going to work with it for quiz six. So like I said, this course is really about basic fluid mechanics. And um, so just to give you physical significance of each term, previously we had the integral of rho of the control volume derivative of that. This, this, this term represented how much stuff is changing in the control volume. Because we shrunk our cube down to a point, it's basically how much the density is changing at point. Um, so if basically density is getting higher, et cetera. This next term represents the flux term. Um, this is basically just the um, spatial derivative in three directions. So it considers all three possible directions. Um, and that was because we considered the amount of flux going in. If you've got flux going on on all sides, and that's all positive, it means you've got a divergence. You've got extra stuff coming in. Same only for outflow. Like um, you might consider like a bathtub pouring water. From the 2D perspective, that's like an outflow. You have a flux of stuff coming out. A bathtub drain will be an inflow, and we'll go over both of those examples. Let's do this. So for this quiz, this will be steady flow. Um, steady flow. Um, oh, sorry. First, I'm going to write the case we're not going to do. Um, if, if basically, it's steady flow and compressible. Steady flow means d rho dt equals zero. Uh, means um, density is not going to change with time. And then if it's compressible, that means the densities can still be a function of space. Okay. So that's what you would do if you were um, aero astro. Um, in this case, we're going to consider the most the simplest possible case, where you have steady flow, stuff's not changing the time, and incompressible. OK. Um, and there, we have this. U is divergence-free. I've actually seen this tattooed on somebody's arm. Uh, we'll derive what's called the Navier-Stokes equations, F equals MA, um, but that's that's uh, one of the two equations that you use to solve for uh, fluid flows. And um, later in the course, there's going to be uh, some cylindrical coordinates. Now, I'll just, we'll just go over that with the time. Uh, I'll just let's write it right now. Let's see. No, that's too much. Let's do it later. OK. So, how in the world does this actually help us solve the initial problem? Well, what this is, is so this is conservation of mass. It tells you that there's no mass lost or gain, and the density is constant, and it's steady. Okay. Um, this equation, so if you remember, what does del mean is basically d d x, d d y, and d d z. Del is a special, it's a vector operator. So Basically, when it attacks other vectors, it attacks them uh, component by component, and it basically takes the derivative of each of those directions. Okay, so when we consider two D flow, we're gonna get to get to the equations of motion. All right. Oh, any questions on this before I race board two or three? Can you leave it up for a sec? Say that again? Can you just leave it up for like 30 seconds? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And this is also in the book, um, but I think some people like the derivations. So what we're going to do next is we're basically going to go from del dot u equals 0 to 
um, the equations that allow us to figure out what the stream function and stream uh, potentials are. Uh, maybe this is a good place to talk about the quiz. Okay. All right. So I have the quizzes, um, but I can't give them back to you yet. Um, there's a there's a there's a couple ethics violations on the quizzes. Um, so I'm going to give the people. Um, who have conducted these things, they can send me a private email and I'm gonna give you a chance to just take the quiz over. I'll give you a whole separate quiz. And you've got about 24 to 40 hours to do that. I think I'll probably have to send an email in case some people are not even watching. But um, I don't like to spend too much time on ethics violations. Because, because most people are most people didn't do anything wrong. But um, but there's like a, there, I have to you know I have to do something about the ethics violation. So according to the Georgia Tech Honor Code, you have you and I we can, you and I can work it out personally, or we'll take it to the honor court, and it will be a long, very long, prolonged process. I have all the evidence, so I'll give you one last chance to basically. Just um, say I want to just take another quiz. You know, everyone's under stress. Like this is a time of semester that like grandmothers are dying and like people are falling off beds and people are getting hit by stuff. No one's sleeping. But at the same time, you know, you're gonna have issues like this throughout your life. You're gonna have a lot of stress and you have to do the right thing. And when you don't do the right thing, it just like it basically everyone else in the class is getting up like really early to come take the quiz and doing it honestly. It's just messing it up for them. So I'll give you 24 or 40 hours to basically send me a private email and we work out a solution. Otherwise, I'm going to escalate. So I got to wait until um, until I receive a couple emails before I return the quizzes. So if you're listening to this, you got to think about think about it and. Um, you know, I have, I'm willing to give you a second chance just because I don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with this. Um, but if basically I can't get any kind of honesty at all, then we're going to escalate. All right. That's why I can't return the quizzes. Sorry about that. But uh, you'll get them back soon. And uh, this next quiz has nothing to do with the previous quiz. So we're going to hold on to it a little bit. Um, all right. All right, now we got to talk a little bit about the string function. Okay. So, like I said, the string function contains information of that velocity field, u as a function of x and y. Um, so the following are all going to be assumptions for the quiz. These are the only, these are really required to, for you to have velocity potentials and to do the problems in this manner. Um, they're going to be steady state, so whatever velocity fields you have are going to be there for all time. Stuff's not going to be a function of time. Um, density's not going to change, so we're going to basically drop density from the conservation of mass. And I'm going to be able to draw everything in a plane. Um, and so those three assumptions, the conservation of mass equation, del dot u is equal to zero. Originally, that looks like du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz. Remember, del is a vector. It's hitting each of the components. Del dot something is going to be a scalar. So what we have is a scalar sum. The basically derivative of the x derivative of the x velocity in the x direction is plus the derivative of v, y velocity in the v. Uh, the y velocity in the y direction and the derivative of the z direction in the z direction. The sum is going to be zero. In other words, if you've got changes in your velocity here, like a basically positive changes, it's going to be negative in the other direction so that you don't have accumulation of mass. Because it's 2D, we have this. 
And so this is going to be zero. Okay. And uh, like the density, the density disappears. Um, all right. So the whole reason we can do streamlines and stream functions is because of we have this nice relationship between du dx and dv dy. Um, So they call it a stream function. Um, what we're originally, what we're trying to find is vectors. You know, u in the u in the velocity in the x direction, the y direction. But all the information is contained in the scalar function. So, for example, in the problem that we saw, we were given phi is equal to x squared minus y squared. That was the potential. I'll talk about the potential in a second. But basically, it's something that doesn't have a vector form. It's going to be a bunch of products and powers, and it has the following relationship that. If you have this stream function and all the um, constants in there, you can take the derivatives in each of these directions, and you will recover your horizontal and vertical velocity. Um, and uh, why is this the case? Well, one, you, one, you see if you can work it out. So substitute these definitions into this equation, which is conservation of mass. Um, see if you can do that at your seat, and tell me what it equals to. So I want people to substitute these equations on the right into here. It'll take, take a few seconds. So, to be, so basically, this is d by dx of u. So I'm going to put in d psi dy here. Plus, and this is d by dy of v. So I'm going to put um, negative d psi dx here. And um, this is going to get us two second derivatives. There's some law of calculus that says if you take the derivatives um, out of order, like dx, dy, or dy, dx, you're going to get the same thing. Um, and this is zero. So what does this little exercise tell us? It tells us that if you have this definition of psi, if you automatic, if you, your velocity field satisfies this, your, the associated u's and v's will automatically satisfy continuity. In other words, this is what we call a physical flow field. You could actually have this be a flow field because you don't have stuff accumulating or leaving. Okay. So I'll put this star. And so this is, so if, if we have a stream function such that star, if it satisfies this relationship, then continuity is satisfied. And you're really going to only be working with you're only going to be working with physical flow fields. We don't want flow fields that are basically just um, you know accumulate, just not satisfying concentration mass. So, so basically, all the problems in the quiz, we're going to work with them so that they have these relationships. So 
Psi also has a couple of nice properties. Um, if you ever watch the weather, oh, actually no one watches TV anymore, but um, if your parents like watch TV and watch the weather, uh, you'll see people standing in front of like these, these like plots of like pressure, you know, we get a high pressure in Georgia, stuff's coming here, and they're gonna show these flow lines. Those flow lines are streamlines. They're basically lines that are parallel to the flow and they correspond to when this phi, sorry, this psi is constant. Um, So let's, let's see why that is. All right. So the way we draw those stream lines, we are given a stream function, and we assume it's equal to three, four, five, some constant, and those will correspond to different lines in the figure. Um, what are called the stream lines, lines that are basically parallel to the flow. Um, whenever you draw, see any kind of like, um, Wind tunnel experiments where you have flow, like basically smoke or particles going over a car, they're generally following um, the streamlines. When things become unsteady, that becomes not so much the case because you have this difference between what's called path lines, streak lines, and streamlines. But um, for the purpose of this quiz, what we really care about is the streamlines. Um, so why is that? Um, well, places where psi is constant are associated with um, places where you don't change in psi. Um, and psi, so, okay, I should probably said this earlier. Um, this is called psi, and this is called phi. So the top one is gonna be what we're gonna use for Stream functions, the bottom one's gonna be for velocity potential. So zero is equal to d psi, and psi is a function of x and y. So when you're saying psi doesn't change, well you're saying it doesn't change in the x or the y direction. So d psi dx, dx plus d psi dy. dy. And when we substitute the, our definitions for the stream function, you get um, negative v dx plus u dy. And this boils down to the following expression. Uh, Doctor Who? Yeah. Are these all, um, what was it? are these partial derivatives or are these um, full? Um, yeah, technically they're partial derivatives, um, but um, yeah, technically, if you got psi as a function of x and y, when you basically do take a derivative of it with respect to x, you should be using this partial sign. Okay. But um, I end up forgetting to do it, and then it just gets confusing. So I just end up just doing this. Um, you just have to remember that it's got two variables. But you're right, I should be making them curly. But for the purposes of what we're gonna use, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, they are supposed to be partials. Um, Okay, so this is actually the equation of a streamline. It says that um, the vertical velocity over the horizontal velocity is gonna um, give, give you the slope of the line. Okay, and that's, that's, we want, that's what we have streamlines to do. And well, I think uh, we'll end up practicing for one of these. Um, what for? All right, now the other fact about stream Uh, stream functions is that you can figure out flow rate quite easily from them. And that's what this warm-up problem is about.
So we'll call a little q the volume rate of flow, but because it's a planar flow, it's not going to have the units of liters per second. It'll be liters per meter into the page per second. Um, and it says if we ever want to figure out how much flow, all you do is subtract one stream function value from the other. So let's say you have these two streamlines, um, lines of constant psi. Um, we'll call this line of psi, and this one of psi plus d psi. The, velocity, the flow is going to go through here. Now, how are you going to calculate um, how much flow is going between those two lines? Um, well, you're going to basically uh, let's draw this a little bit more to the left. My diagrams are so messy. All right, so those two points to figure out how much net velocity goes through here. You got to figure out how much horizontal and vertical velocity is going through any cross section that goes through. So, like for example, here we're going to figure out um, u times dy. Remember, this is just like conservation of mass. You have the velocity times the area of that surface, <clears throat> but the area of the surface is per unit depth into the page. U times dy. This is going to be v times dx. With that. If you take care of those two components, you'll figure out all the flow that goes through there. So imagine, instead of having that sort of weird fishnet thing, I just divide it into two regions where I know the flow is perpendicular to those regions. <clears throat> oh, and the vector I've drawn here is negative VDX, because I'm having it go normal to the surface, which is down. So dq is u dy minus VDX by definition, by considering the horizontal vertical components. All right, so it says small changes in Q are accompanied with small changes in Psi, and the proportionality is one. Um, all right, and so if you ever want to figure out how much flow is going between two points in space, um, like this is some x1, y1, x2, y2, and we'll be, we'll be doing this exercise a couple times over the next two uh, lectures. If you're given two points and you want to figure out how much flow goes between them, you have three tasks. One, figure out the stream function that goes to the first point. Two, figure out the stream function that goes to the second point. And then um, figure out the difference between them. And that will tell you the flow. And oddly enough, psi also has the correct units. Like psi also has volume per meter per second. All right. <clears throat> uh, could you explain um, how you wrote like u dy in the? Uh, yeah, let's picture. talk about this one more time. Um, how did I get this? All right. So conservation of mass, we have d by dt rho dv plus integral rho u d uh, dot n hat dA. Is equal to zero. All right, it's steady flow, so we don't have to consider that part. Now, I've got to figure out what's going through there. And uh, because that's equal to zero, I don't have to consider the velocity. So I'm basically going to be basically doing this integral u dot n hat dA across whatever control surfaces that go across. Now I can divide basically, if I'm trying to figure out what's going across this hypotenuse here. So I'm going to call this a control volume. If I try to figure out what's going across, you know, whatever this is, it's equivalent to figuring out what's going across the, you know, the two legs of the triangle. And <clears throat> let's draw our velocity field, our corner frames, x and y. So we're going to consider x going that way and y going up. And generally, uv is going to be in some, it's going to really depend on what the function is. But this u dot nda term for that side is this, and for the other side it's this, because n is up. And here is x hat, 
and here is negative y hat. So that's where I got uh, udy and negative udx. Does that help? You mean? Uh, yeah. Um, in the dx, like, um, wait, so how did the dx come into play for like the y component? Like the negative VDX. I understand. Uh, like that's the, the area. Control. That's basically the area of that surface. So, DA for for example, on this on this edge, DA is equal to DY times whatever's into the board, DZ. And in this surface, DA is equal to DX DZ. It's basically you know the width of that surface times the width into the board. But because yeah. it's 2D, we only consider the width. And they're saying DZ is unit width. So yeah, this. well, yeah, yeah, we're, we're basically saying dz is unit. And for the, I guess for the y component, it would be dy dz then. That's why it's u dy. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. This is, I'm glad you stopped. Um, yeah, this, these next two quizzes are actually very, are pretty, are pretty mathematical. Um, I'm going to try to put some units sometimes, but, um, it's really about figuring out what these flow fields look like. All right. All right, so now we know everything we need to know to solve this, and hopefully this drawing makes a little bit more sense. Um, <clears throat> all right, um, so the other thing I gotta say is, so we have these two relationships. So the stream function, psi, but we also have something called the um, velocity potential. And they're going to give you lines that are basically, if you draw stream functions, like, I'm just going to draw it like this. Um, we're going to show that that's the case. The stream lines are going to go like this. What this is, why would anyone want to do this problem is, like, if they're trying to model flow past, like, a 90-degree angle. Um, I think there's a website called velocitypotential.com or streamfunction.com. You give it any scalar function, and it gives you whatever shape you get. It's a pretty powerful technique, so we're going to use this to model a couple things over the next two lectures. One is um, the flow around uh, baseballs that are thrown straight, so you're going to figure out the flow, flow around that. Uh, this is all a super, super high Reynolds number where there's no viscosity. Uh, the flow around spinning baseballs. Um, for some of you, you want to do this, Magnus, this uh, course project called the Magnus Effect. Um, I don't know if any of you play soccer or softball or whatever, but you spin the ball and it has a lift. I think I did a little demo. That you can do with velocity potentials. There's a problem in the homework that's called like flow past some like igloo. If you've got basically a half sphere, what is the flow past that and what is the lift and drag on that? So it's pretty powerful once you have the formulation. But um, so this one would be like if I'm given like a 90 degree angle and I want to draw like I don't know, the flow past this thing. This is what it would look like. And I can draw two, I can draw it in two kinds of ways. One, like I just did with the stream functions, the stream lines. This is like this would happen if you had like a little um, little uh, butterfly here. It just would be dragged with the wind because butterflies are not super great flyers. Um, the other way you can draw it is what's called potentials. Um, and that would be looking something like this. Um, But basically, potentials are lines that are perpendicular to the stream functions. And they contain the same information. Um, the way the velocity potential is defined is that um, u is equal to d phi d, d psi dx. So yeah, let's just write both of them here. u is equal to d phi dx is equal to d psi dy. v is equal to d psi d y and negative d psi dx. So once you have your u and v, you can easily convert to potential or stream function or vice versa. You can come back. But um, you can imagine I've drawn these normal, these like potential lines. Like it, probably the easiest way to think about is electromagnetism. Potential lines are basically like the magnets. You have these potentials and these would be electrical fields. You can use one or the other. Um, in this problem, they asked you to convert. So they said, all right, 
um, this is kind of what my flow field looks like, and it's associated with this potential. I want to convert to figure out psi. Oh. Let's see if you can do that on your seats with the relationships I wrote on the top. Why well, erase the board? So see if you can start part A. And I'll give you this on the on the quiz. But a lot of people actually didn't even need to need to use it. A lot of people remembered uh, their Galton equations. All right, so we're starting with All right. So this is our potential um, and our u is equal to d psi dy is equal to d phi dx. Okay. So the first thing I would do is um, figure out what u is. And that means take the derivative of that respect to x. So that gives you 2x. So what does this tell you? It says that, you know, if I want to figure out what the horizontal velocity anywhere in that plane is, all I've got to do is figure out where, what x is and multiply by 2. So at x equals 0, I've got 0 velocity. x equals 1, I'm going to the right two times. x equals 10, I'm going really, really fast. Okay. So it tells you at every point x what, how fast I'm going to the right. Um, but uh, there's only <clears throat> half the problem because I have to get d too. All right. Um, now we've got to use this other relationship um, to figure out. So, so the goal was to go, go from phi to psi, right? And the intermediary is this <coughs> u and v. So I got to use this for the d psi dy is equal to 2x. So d psi dy is equal to 2x. I'm going to integrate this with respect to y. And psi, which is going to be a function of x and y too, is going to be now. Now, this is a pretty key thing. Anytime you're integrating with respect to another variable, you can basically imagine all the, the x's are just constants. Um, similarly, when we did this first step, if you're a little rusty, if you're differentiating with respect to x, that y squared might as well just be chicken squared or rhinoceros squared or whatever. It's just not going to change with x. It's not a function of x. So it just disappears. So here, I'm going to get 2xy plus function, oh, let's write f, a function of what? Well, let me just ask, am I done? Of integration. Oh, what's missing? With respect to y, or with respect to x, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you remember from, um, uh, we talked about before, that's the chicken, right? Right? You have a constant because a constant, when it gets killed, hit by a derivative, goes away. But here, our constant is a function of y. Um, we know more that it's not just some number like 3 or 5. We know it's anything, oh, sorry, function x. It's anything that has x in it. It could be, it could not have x in it, but it could have x in it. Um, so this is because chicken of x, function of x. All right. Now, the whole problem was to go from phi to psi, but we basically got part of it, but then we stuck with this function of x, and that's, that's not going to do. You're going to need want to go a little bit further. And the reason why we haven't fully solved this is because we haven't used the other velocity relationship. The other velocity relationship is this, and that's one of the key things. You're going to have to use both velocities because information on both are hidden in that expression. 
Like, for example, you didn't even use the y squared, and that's what we're going to do now. So go, we go from v um, to psi. So see if you can do that at your seats. And some of you, I think, might be able to figure out the final answer. All right, so how do I get negative 2y? You take the derivative of that respect to y, right? That gives you negative 2y. Now I do the same thing. I got d psi dx is equal to 2y. Integrate respect to this time x. So I get psi of x comma y equal to 2yx. All right. Plus, um, similar to before, except now we have a function of y, right? Yeah. The, um, the boundaries uh, psi is equal to zero. Yeah. Could we use that to say that p of x and c of y are both equal to zero? That's a good point. So when I say psi equals zero there, I mean that those are so everywhere in this velocity field, in this field, I can define a point x and y, and there's a single stream function that goes through it. Um, for example, um, but basically, once you have a, any point, you got one stream function. And we're, what we're saying is when psi equals zero, it's defining this region here. When I'm saying psi equals zero, it means that any, that the stream function that goes through all these points with the x's are such that psi equals zero. So this, this you got to see philosophically what psi equals zero is saying. It's not saying that psi equals zero everywhere. Then this would be like a whole trivial problem. What it's saying is that at this, the stream line that defines this region is defined by psi equals zero. So it doesn't, it's not saying psi equals zero everywhere. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, can we use that to say? Um, yeah, because if we plug in zero for x or y, yeah. we get that c of x um, is equal to zero. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this could work in this case. I think that that could be okay. Um, if it were a more complicated function, maybe it wouldn't be so. It wouldn't be so. Yeah. So um, what, uh, what was said here was that at at psi is equal to zero, we have basically the points x comma y is equal to zero comma zero, and uh, <clears throat> basically if you substitute them, you get basically psi is equal to um, two y x, and that's equal to zero. And so c of x is equal to c of x is equal to zero. I should probably not call this c because it could be a potentially different one. D. But yeah, you could do you could do it that way too. Um, uh, Professor Hu, yeah. why are we not taking the integral of negative d psi dx? Um, we had a negative here and a negative here, so I just got rid of them. Okay. Uh, what was the reason why you could say that constant was zero again? Um, there are two reasons. Well, one of the ways is by looking at the uh, y velocities. Okay. So basically, if we know that psi of xy has to be equal, I have the bug box. It's equal to this, and it's also equal to this. The only function that can satisfy both of them is psi of x comma y is equal to two xy. That means there's no extra stuff hanging around. But then there was a point brought up that uh, if you just looked, looked at one of the definitions of the streamlines, that's also enough to figure out that that constant is zero too. So there are basically like kind of two ways to do this problem, I think. Um, yeah. Couldn't you possibly keep C around? You still have two x, y plus C. Like, as long as it's not a function of x or y, 
that satisfies the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could have basically some, uh, some constant C. Um, but we'll show that basically that C is going to be equal to... And okay, this is also very, very common. So once you figure out the stream function, it's, you're always going to have you're always going to have an additional constant. And physically, it doesn't affect the result because any kind of physical thing that you get from this stream function is always going to be derivatives of this with respect to x or y. Like that q is going to be derivative of this. Um, so c is not actually going to affect you know, your final flow velocity or your final flow profile. For example, if I put like a c equal to 100 million, my x velocity is still going to be whatever is given by this 2xy. So we're always going to have an extra constant there. And for convenience, we just usually just set it to be 0 because it doesn't physically affect what we're trying to get. Phi and psi are really just tools to figure out the velocity field. No one, unless you're trying to draw the streamlines, people usually don't care. All right. And that's ultimately why we drew the velocity field kind of like the way we did. We kind of drew it like this because that this is basically um, psi is equal to 2xy. Um, that's what it looks like. Um, so the problem also gave this point xi comma yi. So let's say if xi comma yi was like 3 comma 3, then that's psi. So for the psi would be equal 9. Uh, sorry, 9 times 2, 18. So that would, so psi equals 18 would define this one. You have psi equal to 10 defining this one, et cetera. You're going down. All right, um, so that's part A. Yeah? So if we weren't given the psi equals 0, how would you find that the constant here? You're usually given a place in the, in the flow that you know what it is. Um, but like I said, you could also, if you're not given that, then you can still solve each of these problems. Because Q, for example, we're going to be taking the derivative of psi. We're taking the difference between psi and two, between two points, and that's going to stay the same. And is, like I said, this is going to be a common feature. Anytime you solve for, if you're given base, the, the key thing is if you're given, this is basically the integral of the velocities. If you're given the integral of velocities, you're never going to know what that constant is. But it doesn't actually matter. Like you make it go to 100 million or pi or whatever. Um. All right, so the answer to part A, you could say plus C. Um, uh, I don't think you would lose credit on the quiz. Um, you definitely can simplify a little bit by saying C equals zero. But uh, to get absolutely full credit, you have C equals zero because of the drawing. Um, uh, sorry. All right. Now, how do we figure out um, Q between basically? Uh, <clears throat> so what they did with this, they draw, they drew this. Um, they defined some point x i comma y i. They called that point B. Uh, they call this point A. They have like a little net across that, and they want to know <clears throat> they want to know how much Q is going through A and B. Q. Um, and so we talked about this earlier. The bottom line is called psi equals zero. This top line is psi equals two x i comma y i times y i. So once you go, this is. Once you have a point, you can always figure out the stream function that goes to that point by substituting that point in. That's what we've done here. And so Q would equal to, so it's going to be equal to, um, we'll call this psi 1 and psi 2, psi 2 minus psi 1. Oh, no, they call it psi B and psi A. Let's use that notation. Two x i y, and you're done. So basically, if you want to figure out how many liters per second go through there, you substitute um, values for x and y. Uh, well, basically, you're given that x i and y, like a three comma three. Does matter? 
Oh, you mean y is just psi b minus psi a, and yeah. not vice versa? Because I mean it's flowing. Um, yeah, it is going this way. So that's a good question. What we derived was this, dq is equal to d psi, um, between psi 2 and psi 1. So you, what you're really supposed to do is do the higher stream function value from the lower one. And psi b, and the lowest, lower one was 0. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Generally, we consider flow rate to be a positive quantity. You want this thing to be positive. Um, if you get something negative, I think it means flow is going the opposite direction. Um, but um, you know, this signs thing, I'm actually terrible with my signs. What I usually do if we're a problem, I'll just basically make sure I draw the velocity fields and then make sure that it's, you know, it really does make sense. So here uh, you can show that the fields are going this way. And how I know the directions are going this way? Because of uh, because I found out this. I found that u was equal to 2x and v was equal to negative 2y. This is how I know it's going to the right and a little bit down. You know, as I go across an x, I'm going to get like u increasing. And it's going to get some weird thing that basically it gets super, super fast here, kind of slow, kind of slow here. And v is going to negative, is going down. So once I know the direction of u and v, um, I can use this, and if I get it wrong, I can make sure I have it the right side. All right, I know that's a lot. Um, like this is a this quiz six and quiz seven are really like a ninety degree turn from the rest of the course. Um, but if those of you who are going to grad school, like this is kind of like I would say this is like the starting point. Now quiz three and four are basically starting points for grad school. But then you, you see some of this. It's actually, potential flow is actually quite useful. Um, one of my good friends, John DeBerry, he's this professor at Caltech, the, um, he got this, the Genius Award, the MacArthur Genius Award, for applying potential flow um, to a series of, have you heard of vertical axis wind turbines? You, the regular wind turbines look like a, like a fan, right? Like the basically spin this way. Vertical axis kind of like looks like a kind of looks like a blender. Uh, kind of looks like they're really tall and they got blades and they spin this way. Um, but for wind turbines, there's this big issue of how, where do you place them. There's something called the Betz limit, where if you take a regular turbine and you put a turbine right behind it, you're not going to harvest that much, that much energy. And the reason is because um, turbines, the Betz limit tells you how much energy, kinetic energy is left after wind flows past it. And then the very best, I think the very best case, you can get 6% of the wind. You can never really get all the wind. Um, and uh, what Debiri showed with potential flow was that um, they looked at fish schooling, which is still an unsolved problem of why fish school. But um, they showed that originally people were really married to the idea of putting vertical axis wind turbines like in a square way, like this, um, where it's sort of the wind flowing this way. But he showed if you put it in kind of like a staggered diamond array, which is how fish school. Um, uh, basically, you can get like something ten times more energy than you would ordinarily. Um, and he showed that with potential flow by basically having a series of uh, sort of sinks, I, I, if I remember, uh, and he or staggered them in a in a, that kind of array. So this this theory was probably derived like a hundred years ago, but it's still people are still using it today. Okay. All right, so we practiced with um, 6.22. Now the rest of the problems on the quizzes, there are gonna be some variation of using what's called the basic potential flows. Um, and uh, we'll start this this time, and we'll go to next time. But basically, they're kind of like, there's four basic potential flows. Uniform flow, source, sink, vortex, and a doublet. Any kind of flow that you make that's interesting is going to be probably a combination of these. For example, John DeBerry's work, you had a uniform flow going past a, some, a series of different, um, uh, I think it was. Uh, Professor, can you swap the camera? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so uniform flow uh, is the simplest, simplest 
plane flow. Streamlines are straight. The magnitude of the velocity is constant. And that's because it's, uh, so that's a little bit different than um, what we had in the previous problem. The magnitude of the velocity was not constant. Um, I think as you move to the right, you just got higher and higher velocity. So physically, it's going to look like this. I mean, some of you that really like to think in pictures, this is a good part of the course for you. Um, and this is that cycle zero um, line that's going through x comma y zero. All right, so that's what, so basically, this is associated with the following uh, flow field. U is equal to capital U. Try to make your capital U bigger. This is also getting the part of the course that we're kind of running out of alphabetical letters. Um, in the quiz, I'll probably put a U naught or something like that. Uh, why don't we just do that now? Uh, U naught. Just to make it super clear that U naught is a constant and V, there's no vertical velocity. And you can always align your flow field so that make it convenient for you. Um, so if you've got you know, flow past a car, you generally want to make x in the direction of your car, et cetera. Um, so what I've drawn there, those arrows are the stream functions. That is, if I had like a little butterfly, I let it go, it's going to just follow those lines. Now I'm going to draw the um, potentials. Um, So this is phi equals zero, uh, phi equals one, phi equals two, et cetera. All right, so you've had your seats um, using the, these definitions, figure out what phi and psi should be. You should just, if you do this once, you'll kind of, you should, hopefully you should remember it um, and should be able to do it easily. But uh, see if you can do this. You should not be struggling to figure out phi and psi given from you, because you have to, it's kind of be like, very, you have to be very facile with it come quiz time. All right, um, so this should be quite easy. Um, you should get phi is equal to u naught x plus c. Uh, we can just ignore the c. Um, and psi is equal to u naught y. All right. Uh, does anyone need me to go through this? You guys, this is okay? Can you go through it really fast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, all right. How did I get that? Well, here, we put u not here and we put zero here. Okay. I'm going to give you this le left hand side in the quiz. This, what these say is the derivative of this stuff is equal to that. So, derivative of phi, uh, derivative of phi with respect to x is u not. So, the phi dx is equal to u not. Integrate. So, I got phi is equal to u not x plus f of y, right? That's just like we did last time. 
And um, similarly, um, that's and this one says zero. Um, that one says for you and the V, the V also tells us information about the phi, right? V says d phi dy is equal to zero. So phi is equal to um, function of x. Right? If I'm saying the derivative of phi respective of y is zero, that means my phi is any kind of function of x. Because from the y perspective, that's just and if I combine these two, if I combine these two, that one says it's only a function of x. This one says I've got a function x plus y, so that function of y has to disappear. That's the only possible solution that satisfies both the equation for u and v. I mean, you could have this constant, like I said, but you're going to have a constant for all of them. So we're just going to just not even. Not physically relevant. Uh, so make sure you practice. We did that twice in lecture now. Uh, make sure you practice that at home, um, because that is basically really just bread and butter. Does that derivation make sense? If you're having an issue, you gotta make sure you practice it before you try the homework. So, force and sink is basically like a radial version of uniform flow. This is our first non Cartesian system. For this quiz, you will definitely need to know polar and Cartesian. You can consider it to be the polar version of uniform flow. Version of uniform flow. Instead of flow going in the x and y direction, it's going the r or theta direction. All right, uh, that's time. Uh, but go through your definitions of polar coordinates. Um, you have u r and u theta. We'll talk about those a little bit the next time. There are also separate stream functions, stream uh, velocity pendulum equation for that. I'll talk about those. And if you think you might have made a small, like, uh, ethical mistake on the quiz, um, I'm happy to forgive you and let you do the quiz over. But you gotta, you gotta tell me. I already have, I already have my list. Uh, Doctor Who. Could uh, my group and I discuss our group project yeah. with you? Um, yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, so over the weekend,